Today, I'm gonna show you how to take an old tank and a handful of hardware and turn it into a mighty forge. Stay tuned. What is up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So just about a year ago, I made this little forge out of a cheap little grill and a hair dryer. And it has been an absolute little trooper. It's helped me make arrowheads, a spear, even a straight razor to shave with. That being said, both age and the fires of Hades has not been kind to it, and it's starting to crumble a little bit. And though that's easy enough to repair, I figured now is as good a time as any to upgrade a little bit. So without much further ado, allow me to introduce you to my newest summoned artifact from the Plains of Oblivion. I give you the Infernal Swine, Boldercrust, the Hell Pig. <laughs> this piglet of punishment uses propane gas to deal out some really serious heat. Now, because this does deal with the explody juice and copious amounts of Prometheus' gift, I need to give you the standard YouTube warnings. So, all that follows this bit right here is for informational and entertainment purposes only. We here at Skilltree don't recommend you try this without professional supervision and take zero responsibility for destruction of property, personal injury, loss of life, and calling upon the gaze of the Dark Ones. Cool, with all the legal out of the way, let me show you how I made this and level up this skill. Prepping the tank. Okay, so for the body of this bad boy, I end up using this water filtration tank that I got from my local dump. Now you can really use any appropriately sized metal container for this build, but I would say if you find yourself with an old propane tank, be extra careful that there's no like gas still left inside while you're cutting it open. All right, to begin with, this tank is covered in all this white paint that I am almost positive will not withstand the temperatures we're gonna put this through. So using an orbital sander, I started to remove it. And then I quickly realized that this is stupid because it was going real slow. Then I remembered I had this flat disc for my grinder. And what came next was a cacophony of dust and noise and sparks that acts as the summoning chant for the sausage of Satan. And once the dust settled, I was left with this clean silver cylinder. All right, so next I got to marking out my openings. Now the size I'm going with is about four inches tall by about five inches wide. And this is just me going by eye for what I thought looked good, but I'm sure the smaller the better in order to conserve heat. Now I also did a smaller hole on the back just so I can have longer pieces of metal pass through in case I wanna, I don't know, make a sword or something. Just saying. Foreshadowing perhaps? With that all laid out, I carefully cut it out with my grinder. Now, because this was a water filtration unit, there was this rubber bladder that was inside, but that actually came up pretty easily just by pulling. Just saying, depending on the tank you use, there might be some fiddly little thing you might have to deal with inside. And with that rubber out of the way, I got to cutting that smaller back hole. Now, I haven't done it yet, but I, I actually saved those little plates so I can insulate them and use them to cover up one side or the other, depending if I need to save more heat. All right, it was at this point I had a small camera issue. You didn't miss much. All I did was use a Sharpie to draw a ring around the very top of this thing so I knew where to cut it out. And I also drew some registration marks too, just so I knew how to put it back on. So with those all drawn up, I cut this top now front section off to give me more access to the inside. And then I cleaned off all of the edges with a file because the pig will take a blood sacrifice if given the chance. And it did, just so many blood sacrifices during this build. Now, as far as I can tell, you only open the tank up this much so you have access to be able to insulate the inside. Almost everybody else I've seen use this kind of method ends up welding this back into place after the fact. But I don't have a welder yet. So instead, I decided to mount this hinge on the top. And actually, I kind of like it. I like being able to have that freedom to open it back up again and move things around and make adjustments if I need to. I mean, the proof is gonna be in the pudding. We'll see after I've used it a bunch of times if that becomes like a pain point for me. But so far, it's been pretty good. With that in mind, I put the top back into place and line up those registration marks so I'm sure it fit perfectly. Now for my hinge, I decided to use this heavy duty gate hinge. The problem is, the tank has a rounded top here, and the hinge is straight. But the solution turned out to be way easier than I thought it would be. A simple trip to my vice corrected the situation and got me actually a really clean fit. I was surprised and impressed at how easily that bent up. Now, because it's a little bit long, I decided to cut a bit of a nice design into the end rather than just a straight edge. For he is a fancy hell pig. 
And with that looking all spiffy, I just kind of put it into place and marked out where my holes will go with the Sharpie. Now, whenever you're drilling metal, it's best to start with a smaller drill bit and then work your way up to the size that you need. The hardware I ended up using to hold this into place were these one inch long quarter 20 bolts. To which I just added a washer on the back and the appropriately sized nut. And this nut and bolt setup ended up being a really simple but super strong and secure hold. Okay, so for these adorable little feet I have on them here, I opted to just use these corner brackets that I had laying around the shop. And can I just say, I love when you like hoard away a little piece of something that you weren't able to use on an old project and it totally ends up coming in handy and saving you in a clinch. Not having to go back to the store kind of makes my day, I'm not gonna lie. Now, as far as feet go, I really just need to give this a little bit of a lift and stop the cylinder from rolling when, you know, there's fire everywhere. So all I ended up doing to put these into place was resting the cylinder atop some bricks to get the height that I wanted and marked out where the front legs will go with the Sharpie. And then I pre-drilled my holes and locked them into place with some self-tapping sheet metal screws. Okay, so once those front legs were in place, I slapped a level on the top and raised up the back until everything was on the level before locking them in place with some self-tappers as well. This ends up giving me about one inch clearance between the forge and the tabletop. Okay, so for the last step in this step, I needed to keep this front lid from opening so it would keep all the insulation in place and you know, let all the fire out. To solve this problem, I used another thing I salvaged from an old project and busted out the spring and hook assembly. All I had to do was lock this spring to the belly of the beast with a self-tapping screw, and then assess where the hood lamped onto the lid so that I can drill a hole to accommodate it. And that ended up working really well. And I understand that if you were to give this a try, you might not have a random spring hook assembly. You can do whatever you want. This just really worked well for me. Okay, so now that we have the body basically built, we can move on to insulation. All right, so to keep the heat inside of this bad boy, I end up going with this one inch KO wool that I got from Amazon. Now this stuff is really cool. It looks like the insulation you put into a wall, but it's made from like a ceramic and it's super effective. Like, check this out, look at that. I feel nothing. It's not burning my hand at all. Incredible. Could just be because I'm cold and dead inside and numb to the pains of the world. But caution, the fibers of this stuff can be really dangerous if you breathe them in and can cause cancer. So make sure you're masking up if you're messing with it. To help mitigate that danger, you need to use a rigidizer like this one that I bought from Amazon. This stuff just helps keep the fibers from becoming airborne in the first place and, you know, killing you. But the bottle says it can be painted on or dipped or whatever, but I decided to add it to a spray bottle so that I can cover it that way. The problem is this stuff goes on clear and it's really easy to miss an area and not realize you missed it. So to solve this, I just added a bit of this blue food coloring to the bottle. This makes it so that where I'm spraying, I can see where I've already gotten because of the coloration and make sure that I cover everything. You don't wanna just miss it, you wanna get it good and wet, you want this stuff to soak into the fibers. In fact, just to make sure I was extra safe, I got both sides. Now it says in the bottle you can either leave it for 24 hours to dry by itself, or if you're impatient like I am, you can bust out a torch and drastically speed up that drying process. The fire, she is the only thing that makes me feel alive anymore. Cool, so once it was dry, it was time to line the forge. This ended up being really easy. I started by just pressing the wool into the cover and tracing around it with a Sharpie. Then I cut it out with a razor knife. Oh, and quick note, even after using the rigidizer on it, wear a mask. I, I still noticed while I was cutting it, some stuff getting airborne. Always better to be safe than sorry. Now, using the first round as a template, I cut out the second one for the back. And both of these are just force fit into place, so aim for it to be slightly larger than you need. All right, with those where I wanted them, I busted out a ruler just to measure how much leftover space I had inside the tank. Then I used a straight edge to cut out the strip needed. This I just rolled up and positioned into the cavity, keeping it tight to the walls. Now for the floor of the forge where my metal will actually sit, I just picked up this fire brick from my local hardware store and laid it on the bottom. Then added a second layer of the KO wool, giving me two inches of insulation around the walls. Then finally, I closed the lid to lock everything into place and cut up the front and back openings with my razor knife. And with that, the installation step is done. We're, we're moving right along here. 
But now it's time to move on to the truly kind of dangerous bit in the part that scared me the most. The burner. All right, so I got the plans for this whole burner assembly from an instructable by making custom knives. I left a link in the description in case you want to check that out. That being said, there are a lot of designs for a forge blower. So I'll pick your poison. I just picked this one because it was the most simple to me. All it requires to put together are two four inch long eighth of an inch nipples connected by an eighth inch coupling and dead ending with an eighth inch cap. Then a 90 degree elbow that leads to a two inch long nipple. Now, so far, every piece of hardware there has been an eighth of an inch measurement. But now we're gonna jump up to a quarter of an inch using this eighth inch to quarter inch bushing so I can add on this quarter inch safety shutoff valve. Finally, a quarter inch MIP to three eighths inch flare gives us our connection point to the regulator hose used for the propane. I know that was a lot of pieces. I'll leave a list in the description below to make it easier. But just know that everything after the first coupling here is only there to get the, the actual hose, the propane comes through, further away from the fire. You can assemble this in any crazy way with other fittings or whatever you want after that coupling. Now the only other bits that I needed to make this was a three quarter by eight inch long black pipe, a one inch by five inch long black pipe, and a one inch to three quarter bell reducer. I also ended up needing this one and a half inch by three inch nipple here just to be able to connect everything to the forge. Again, all those parts will be in the description below. Okay, so the way this works is we need to end up drilling a small hole into this two inch nipple we have here to act as the orifice for our gas to actually come through. That's then mounted through this bell here that directs it down this pipe so that the fire ends up in our forge. Now to mount this little sucker here, I locked the bell reducer into my vise and found its center just below the lip here. Then I drilled a pilot hole with a small bit before moving up to a 7 16 bit, giving me enough room to accommodate this pipe. Okay, so to drill out the actual orifice where the gas comes through, I needed to pick up this number 57 micro drill bit. Then all I did was find the center of that pipe and then carefully drilled my hole. You're gonna wanna be really careful with that drill bit, maybe even pick up a couple of them because they're super fragile. Cool, so with that all said, it's time to put this whole assembly here together. Now to help give me an airtight seal and stop, you know, unwanted fire and explosions, I decided to use this pipe thread sealant that was rated for gas. All you have to do is apply an even coat to the male threads and then tightly connect everything into place. And this part is really important, so take your time with it and make sure you do it right because you do not want any leaks with a flammable gas. All right, and of course, save that end cap for last so that you can slide everything into place before locking it in. And with that, the assembly's pretty much done, which was like disarmingly easy considering how dangerous this feels to me. There is an issue though. You see how the business end can kind of spin free within that bell there? This is obviously bad because you don't want the fire to be shooting out the top here, right? You need to make sure you're controlling it down this way. The simple solution to this is just to screw in a pipe on that larger end there. This works out because this piece of pipe goes through those threads. So by tightening this in, you're just tightening it onto this pipe, locking it into place. I did want to get it really tight though. So I decided to be a little bit fancy here. All I did was drill a hole straight through my five inch black pipe, just above the threads. Then I cut off that end with my grinder just above those holes. Now I can just slide a bar through there for a little extra torque and really lock that supply tube into place. To make sure that orifice there was pointing exactly to the center, I just put the drill bit back inside of that hole to give me a visual. Then I just tightened everything into place nice and secure. Finally, I added on this eight inch section of the burner here and used that cutoff bit from earlier to act as a flare. Now I've read a lot of varying things in the flare. Some say you should actually forge flare this, like heat this up and hammer it out so it's a flare. Some people say you don't need it at all. Some people say you can just put the pipe on it. For now, I'm just putting the pipe on it. Maybe I'll flare it out later, we'll see. But with all of that in place, it was time to test. So I attached everything to my gas regulator and opened this bad boy up. Oh, and quick note about the regulator. You really can't use like your regular barbecue regulator. You want a higher pressure one. I grabbed this one again from Amazon, rated at 30 PSI. Okay, but not so fast. Don't light this thing up yet. We have to check for leaks first. Now this is super simple to do. All you need is a spray bottle with some soapy water in it. All I did was spray each joint down thoroughly, and then I held that little orifice with my finger before opening up my valve. 
If there's any leaks, you're gonna see a little bubble start to form where the gas is escaping. And secure in the knowledge that I had no leaks, it was time to light this sucker up. And literal hot damn did it light up. I am not gonna lie, this step scared the hell out of me. Like I've read online, and I know it was relatively safe, but like still, there's something about lighting up a thing that you made that is just a little bit terrifying, especially if you're not a professional. <laughs> Speaking of which, every workshop should have a fire extinguisher right within reach, just all the time. This is my PSA to you. All right, so we have the body of the forge. We have the fire stick here. It's time to move on to the last step, which is putting it all together. I'm gonna be honest with you, trying to figure out how to connect that burner to the forge stumped me for a little bit. That's because almost every other design I see has them put like a tube or something like I have on here, but then they weld it into place. And again, I have no welder. The solution I came up with though here is actually really simple. I just got this inch and a half by three inch nipple to mount onto the top. Another quick aside here too that I read is you don't wanna mount your, your burner directly over your project. I read that this can make kind of a single hotspot and uneven heat and all that. Instead, if you kind of put it in this like two o'clock position here, it causes the heat to spiral within, heating up the whole forge more evenly. I think I said that, right? Leave in the comments below if you know what you're doing here and know better than me. All right, to attach this sucker, all I did was take this inch and a half hole saw and cut my way right through it. I was also able to use that hole saw to cut slowly through my insulation too, leaving me with this perfect little hole. Next, I drilled four evenly spaced holes all around that pipe with a quarter inch drill bit. Then I added threads to set holes with a quarter 20 tap. And if you've never seen a tap before, they're just used to cut threads into a thing. They're usually really cheap to get a set and they are super useful. Like I make little brackets and stuff to hold up lights all the time and I need screws to hold them into place. So it's really cool to be able to make my own little threads. And doing so with my pipe here allows me to add bolts all around it so I can use it to lock my burner into place. Now I simply screw that pipe into the hole that I made in the top and then slide the burner into position, tightening down my bolts and completing my hell pig. Well, almost completing. At this point, it looks a little bit fallout y To make it look a little more professional, I just added a coat of this high heat paint. And behold, Hephaestus's ham summoned from the depths to aid me in my dark works. I love this thing. And it worked so good. In maybe just over a minute, I was able to get this piece of steel up to a working temperature. It is so cool. Well, I mean, it's really hot, like really hot. I cannot wait to use this to make something. I'm so excited. Leave things in the comments section below I can make with this bad boy. I hope you like watching this project as much as I like making and playing with it. If you did, why don't you hit me with some of that like it love and subscribe so you know when I release new content. And of course, as always, special thanks to my lovely Patreon members. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do half of the awesome stuff that I do. So really, thank you so much. If you like what I do here and you want to help support the channel, consider joining the Patreon down below. I'd really appreciate it. Finally, if there's anything you'd like to see me make, leave in the comment section below and I will add it to the list. All right, well, I should get going. The gods need more weapons forged. I have work to do. In the meantime, Keep leveling up, you.